When we're looking at chance experiments and trying to understand probability of random events, so we said there are two parts, sample space and the probability of each outcome in our sample space. So we previously looked at our sample space, so now what we need to do to make a proper probability distribution is to add in the probability part. Now, there are some of these that we already know, so very basic, so I like to say kind of contrived uh, probability, things like coin tossing, dice rolling, we know how those work. So for example, if we're looking at flipping a coin, our probability distribution, we could represent like a table like this. So our outcomes, we could get a head or we could get a tail. And both of them have equal chance of happening, so it's easy to say it's 50-50. So when everything is equally likely, every outcome just has one over the number of things probability of occurring. So that makes coin tossing really easy. It also makes our idea of getting dice rolling very easy. So if we just want to write out what it would be. So again, we want to think outcome and we want to know the probability of each of our outcomes. Now we have six outcomes to our die, one, two, three, four, five, six. Assuming we have a fair die, that means everything is equally likely. If we have six things, then everything is just going to have probability one out of six. Now this is nice and convenient that everything has probability one out of six. Uh, sometimes we will have known probabilities because it is a process that's computer generated and it's been set in the code. So for example, if you are looking at a game and you have a certain chance of getting a critical hit and we're looking at did or did not get a critical hit, that's actually been programmed into the code, a specific probability. Other ways, and we'll talk about this more in other classes, but we could think of uh, we have done just many trials practices in real life and said what our observed proportion was, was the actual probability. We just collected lots of data, lots of health data, big databases, anything like that, crowdsourced information to get an approximate value of probability and said, well, we're just going to declare the observed proportion to be the actual probability. So we want to think kind of what we're looking at is oftentimes a probability model where it's a model of real life that's close enough and maybe not 100% exact like it would be in a dice rolling experiment. Now another thing that we can do with our probability distributions is we can sometimes infer missing values if we don't have all of them. And that's because we have a few rules that come with a probability distribution, which should be very intuitive. None of these should be surprising, but sometimes we need to say them specifically to trigger them in our head when we're doing problems. So if I have a sample space with n outcomes, so I have n things that could happen. So on a dice rolling, it would be n equals six. We have outcome one through six. The number is one through six and each of them is probability P1 through Pn. So dice rolling P1 through P6, they're all one over six. The probability model has to have the following rules. So each of these probabilities are between zero and one. So they're not negative and they're not greater than one. Nothing can have a negative probability of happening and nothing can have a greater than 100% probability of happening and two, all of the probabilities have to add up to one. If they didn't add up to one, that means we were missing something in our sample space. Remember the sample space lists every possible outcome. If the probabilities don't add to 100%, that means we were missing an outcome in our sample space. And what this is going to do is it's gonna allow us to infer some missing values in our probability distribution. So we're going to look at something that's a little bit contrived uh, here for why that is important. So say, for example, I have this one. Suppose y is the following probability distribution. So y takes on the value 0, 1, 2, or 4. 
and the probability of each of these is k, 0.2, 0.15, and 0.4. So the question is, what's the value of k? So k is a number between 0 and 1. What is it? Well, it's going to be whatever makes us a valid probability distribution. It says those are our only choices of numbers. So that means that we need to have them sum up to 1. So if I add k.2.15.1 together and I set it equal to 1, what are we going to get? Just doing a little bit of simplification there. So we'll get k plus 0.2 plus 0.15 plus 0.4 is 0.75 is equal to 1. So if k plus 0.75 is equal to 1, that means k must be 0.25. It's whatever is missing. So again, this sounds a little bit contrived, but there actually is a purpose to this. So sometimes when we're looking at probability distributions, technically our possible outcomes could be really high, very large number of things, but only some of them are really realistic. So for example, if we were talking about the probability distribution of how many scratch tickets, so it's a gambling thing, could I buy until I buy one that's not a winner? Well, technically you could probably sit there for and get thousands and thousands of them. The odds of winning aren't that great. So in practice, five or six might be enough to quantify and we might just lump everything else as seven plus. So our probability distribution, we might add it note it as zero, as one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven plus, and just say whatever is missing instead of actually calculating the probability for seven through goodness knows how many, we'll just lump them into one category and say that seven plus has probability, I don't know, two percent. So that is an actual use to this. It's not a totally contrived example. The other thing that we want to note about probability distributions is sometimes we don't actually care about the literal outcomes. We care about functions of the outcomes. So say I'm tossing the coin. Maybe I don't really care literally what the sequence of heads and tails are, but I just care how many heads I got. So say I'm playing some sort of again gambling game where I'm going to get paid a buck for every head that I get. I don't care whether I got heads, tails, or tails, heads. I care that I got one. So sometimes we'll have a variable x that is a function of the sample space. And so when I'm doing this question, so my actual experiment is tossing a coin twice. We know what that this sample space is, h, 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 t, t, h, t, t, but if I'm interested in the distribution of x, which is my number of heads, I can think about, well, what are my possible values of x? I'm rolling a coin twice, so that means I could have 0, 1, or 2 heads in two coin tosses. So my x has possible value 0, 1, 2. Then we ask, what's the probability of each? Well, which outcomes make it 0? Tails, tails. That is one out of the four possible outcomes, so that is probability one out of four. What outcomes have x equals one? Well, heads, tails, or tails, heads. That's two of the four possible outcomes, so it has probability 50%. And then we have x is equal to two. What's the probability it's two? Well, heads, heads leads to it being two, which is one out of the four possible outcomes, so it is probability 0.25. So this is another way we use probability distributions when we don't care about the literal outcomes, but we have a random variable x that is a function of the outcomes. Now this leads us to another important point. You notice what I did there. I was interested in a certain collection of the outcomes and I assigned it a probability by adding up the probability of the outcomes that match the thing that I was interested in. If we want to put this in a more technical term, what I was talking about here was events. 
So when I'm looking at a group of possible outcomes, we call this an event. So a subset of outcomes in our sample space. So an event was getting exactly two heads, getting exactly one head, getting zero heads. And how did I find my probability for that? Well, by summing up the outcomes that mapped on to that event. So this is the probability rule that I like to quote. The probability of an event is the sum of the outcomes that make up the event. So if I want to get a distribution, I find what are my possible values in my variable, what outcomes map onto each of those values, and then add up the probabilities of all outcomes that map to the exact same value. This could also be taken in general. I already have the distribution of my x and I want to ask a question about it. So here we'll see an example of that. So if you go to the Canadian Blood Services website, it gives these probability percentages. So I first checked this in 2017, but I have recently verified they have not changed this. And so what it says here is that a person with type B positive blood can receive a blood transfusion from someone with type O negative, O positive, B po negative, or B positive blood. So depending on your blood type, who you're able to receive blood from or who you're allowed to donate blood to is going to change. So it is known B positive can get these four types of bloods. So if I randomly select a person to donate blood, what's the probability they could donate to someone with type B positive blood? So probability of an event is the sum of the outcomes that map onto the event. Which outcomes would allow someone to donate to a person with B positive blood? Well, it could be all of the ones with the O positive, O negative, or the B positive, O negative. These are all the outcomes that would make up the event can donate to someone with type B positive event. So the probability of the event, the probability that they could donate to B positive, we just sum up the outcomes that map onto it. So 0 0.076 plus 0 0.014 plus 0 0.39 plus 0 0.07. And what we'll get is 0 0.55 when I add that up. So the probability if I select a random Canadian that they would be able to donate blood to someone whose blood type is B positive is 0 0.55. The probability of an event is the sum of the outcomes that make up the event. I will do one more example here. So for this one, I encourage you to pause the video for a second and give it a try. And then once you've done the question on your own, come back to the video and try it out. So here we're going to use the idea of we need to make our probability distribution valid. And the probability of an event is the sum of the outcomes that make up the event. So pause here and come back in a minute. All right, hopefully you took a second to try that out. So here we have a probability distribution for scratch and save coupons. So these offer discounts to people of varying amounts. So here are the possible discount amounts people could get, one, two, three, four, or $5. So we want to know the probability that someone gets a discount of at least $4. So probability of an event is the sum of the outcomes that map onto that event. So which ones are at least $4? Well, four and five dollars are at least. At least means that much or more. One, two, and three are not at least four dollars, but four and five are four or more. So we would have 0 0.13 plus k, but k is a constant. We don't know what it is yet. We want to give an actual probability. My options are all numbers, so I also need to figure out what k is going to be. So we know that if we add these probabilities together, we need to sum up to one because these are all the possible discounts that they could have. So 0.41 plus 0.26 plus 3K plus 0.13 plus K is going to be equal to one. So let's group together all of the Ks and all the not Ks. So what we'll get 
4, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, and the extra decimal is 0 0.8. How many k's do I have? 3k plus k is 4k's equal to 1. So 4k is equal to 1 minus 0 0.8, so 0 0.2. So if 4k's are 0 0.2, that means 1k has to be a quarter of 0 0.2, which is 0 0.05. So our probability of at least $4, so that's our probability of 4 plus our probability of 5. So our probability of 4 is at 0 0.13. Our probability of 5 is that 0 0.05, so we'll get 0 0.18. That is going to be our answer. And we use two different concepts. Probability of an event is the sum of the outcomes that make up the event when I have all my possible outcomes known. And two, all outcomes have to have their probability sum to 1. So when we had an unknown value, we needed to solve for it in order to get to our answer. And that is our idea behind probability distributions.